Hey guys, this is Habib. Here I am. I'm gonna get my cryo done. So let's fall. Let's go this way. I'm here at uh, Elite Wellness, so I'm gonna head towards the cryo. Let's go. All right, you ready? I'm ready. undergarments you want. I'm going to give you a pair of socks. You Are you wearing socks? i got socks. Okay. How long are they? Perfect. Okay, you can keep those on. So you're going to come back out wearing a robe and of any pair of slippers you would like and I'm going to give you gloves and we'll get you in. Sounds good. All right. Excellent. Ready? You ready? I'm ready. Yeah. All right. Let's get you in here and you're going to step up in here for me. Okay, so here I'm inside the chamber. So the aim is to expose my, uh, not expose my head, and just to cover up my feet and my hands so I don't get uh, chilled. But uh, we're gonna uh, super freeze the body, and that's the chamber. So let's get started. All right, robe. Ready. All right, head up for me so you're not breathing in any of that vapor. Head up a little bit for me so you can clear that vapor. It'll settle down in a second. Feels good. I'm ready for my cup of coffee now. All right, go ahead and turn and face that way for me so you can rotate that way that one side of the body is not getting too exposed to the nitrogen vapor. Nice. How long does this go on for? You're going to be in there for a total of two and a half minutes. That's good. I just jump out. <laughs> Do a high jump. And then right watch now. your step. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready, yeah. Let's go. All right, careful, careful, careful. Watch your step. Yeah, I might not jump in case my muscles don't work. Let's go, yeah. Let's go. Woo! You feel the. Oh, you feel everything. You feel the chills right through. It's, real. it's invigorating. It's like, um, I mean, not like, but it's. Uh, that's why I like a cold shower in the morning. It kind of just wakes you up. It really, like, jolts you either awake or makes people feel really relaxed. I like what you said, it's intense, so it's like getting the hypothermia, but it's intense. But what it's doing is tricking the body, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. If I'm wrong. It's tricking the body into making uh, you uh, activate your defense mechanism. Because if you're going to freeze to death, you have to activate the immune system. So it can activate in two ways. Any internal uh, intermittent stress can what we call create heat shock proteins. Heat shock proteins activate the immune system, clear up the old dead cell, like autophagy. So when you talk about autophagy for intermittent fasting, it's because of intermittent stress. When you talk about intermittent, uh, when you talk about hypothermia and you're creating heat shock proteins, that's the same thing. So hypothermia is the opposite of hyperthermia, but that intermittent stress is also creating heat shock proteins. So heat shock proteins are not only made from heat from sauna, but you can generate it from intermittent high intensity training. You can uh, generate it from fasting. You can generate it from hypothermia. So this cryo is great. The last time I did one, after the cryo, I did my workout sometime later, an hour or two. I had a really smooth workout. So let's see if the same thing happens again. Awesome. So here I'm with uh, McKenna and uh, she's gonna give me the lowdown on the differences between different cryos out there. So you're telling me there's some variation between the different cryos. So there's a nitrogen based chamber that you just did. So liquid nitrogen converts into a vapor and that is what's used to cool the body. Then there's uh, electric walk-in chambers. They just can't, imagine uh, I guess a walk-in freezer. They just don't have the power, I guess, to get as cold. So they might get to like negative 170 degrees Fahrenheit, 
where ours will get to negative 240 Fahrenheit, 240, negative 245. That's really cold, but you need that Felt cold. It. You need that cold to like induce a physiological response of the body. Otherwise you're just kind of like, I'm kind of cold, but I'm not that cold. Exactly. So you're, you know? Yeah. It's interesting how that was for two and a half minutes. I, yep. I don't think I could have lasted much longer anyway without uh, becoming an icicle. So um, <laughs> what, what did they come up with the, the duration? Uh, I think probably through testing and you want to get the body to a point where it thinks it's going through hypothermia without extended duration. So I, I think if you pushed it, some people were like, can we do five minutes? I just think it starts doing more harm than good at that point. Because after two and a half, three minutes, you really do feel like almost like the blood start leaving your, your extremities. Yeah. So then we get into an area and how do you test this in a clinical trial without actually like yeah. freezing someone? So, so it would be very interesting. I mean, uh, I think uh, the, as I was saying that the way I experienced it was that I had a very smooth exercise. So I know a lot of people do this post-workout, you know, to cool down. We understand that, you know, exercise does create inflammation and the hypothermia afterwards is some benefit, but we're talking about benefits on a molecular level. And so t tell me a little bit about, you know, when we're turning around uh, the 360. Right, so the vapor will come out from one side. So if I left someone standing, the vapor is gonna swoop around and could cause an irritation of the skin. So I wanna rotate them, that, ma that machine is very cold. Um, and that just protects us, it protect protects the client too. So, but you want even distribution and it's, I spend a lot of time explaining to people that it's not the same as an ice pack. Because a lot of people prefer ice baths and that's mm, not my, yeah, not, not my, my cup, cup of tea. tea yeah, yeah. But um, it's important to try to explain to people like this is an internal process, yeah. it's not external. It's not like I hurt myself and I'm putting ice here. Okay. It is full body. And, uh, and I think what you probably said, it probably does more harm by going longer because the idea is that the, the, the molecular activation is uh, by, uh, by triggering the immune response because of intermittent stress. So anytime the body feels any kind of stress, there's an activation going on. So that is achieved, as I said, through you know, uh, intermittent fasting, it is achieved through uh, soreness, hypothermia and can be achieved through in, uh, high intensity interval training. Um, so, so hypothermia, the, uh, uh, this uh, cryo, uh, probably uh, if we measure it at some point, which hasn't been done yet as far as I know, uh, but maybe we should do it, is to measure heat shock proteins. So heat shock proteins are interesting because when you have proteins that are three-dimensional, let me give you an example of a protein. In your mitochondria, when we talk about energy and how the mitochondria is involved, it's actually a protein that sits on the membranes of the mitochondria called ATPase and how, when the electrons trans, uh, go through the membranes it drives the turbine and that's how you get the energy. So that's a protein and proteins have a three-dimensional shape as you might imagine it begins the turbine but they lose their three-dimensional shape after wear and tear, oxidation, aging process and what heat shock proteins do is that they take this misfolded protein, put it back inside, uh, inside uh, uh, the exosome, and by putting a cap on it, the heat shock protein is able to regenerate the three-dimensional protein and then release it in, into the circulation. So the, the way we have studies is on hypothermia, and what they were able to do is by creating increased hypothermia throughout the body, and including a, a temperature gradient in the brain, they're able to get rid of degenerative cell, cells in, in Lou Gehrig disease. So that's one of the very rare cases where you've actually been able to reduce it because the body uh, is able to eliminate the degenerated tissue, able to activate the normal function, and so the nerves were able to regenerate. So that's a you know, parallel information. Yeah. But um, anyway, so with this one, as I said, that it probably has much more of a molecular benefit than most people are aware of. But certainly, I think that um, if it equates to better recovery and, and, and better performance, I think it's a good thing. Totally, and people relate it to strictly being performance-based, but it's not true because we have people that come here that have serious problems. They don't even have, they, they're like, I don't even exercise at all. So, but they, it, it helps them in a way that no one else can describe. And I wish we did so much research on clinical trials and there's, it's a gray area with this because they did test a lot on like hyperthermia, yeah. but we need to somehow maybe do another study and maybe we could test the heat shock proteins. Maybe we can put people there and then exactly. you can take their blood, we can figure out something. But I think the more data we can get on this, we could really create a, a better awareness of the power of it. Well, that's great. You sold me. So I'm going to start sending my patients and my clients and we're going to be talking about this more often because 
For two and a half minutes, you can't beat it.